All right, so many of you know that I have the 2016 Iron 883. It was entirely an emotional purchase based on my 2017 Iron 883. And in stock form, it's gonna look exactly the same as when I first bought my 2017. And in a matter of two weeks on this 2016, I'm gonna do all the mods that I did on my 2017. It took me about a year to do. In this video, we're gonna go through all those mods. Let's get started. <music> So two things before we get started. First, I paid for all of this. None of this was given to me for free by anybody. So you're gonna expect my honest opinion about all of these. I use these extensively on the 2017 and I'll use them again extensively through this riding season on the 2016. Second thing is in one of these corners here, I'm gonna go ahead and put the amount that I paid for everything so you can see the total cost. So I'm gonna make this really easy. I'm gonna start at the front of the bike. I'm gonna go counterclockwise around the bike. So I'm gonna go from the left side of the bike as if you're riding it all the way around to the right and back to the front. So for this first one, I'm gonna need a knife here. So one thing that's great about riding an Iron 883 is while you're riding, you can feel all the elements. It doesn't have a fairing, it doesn't have a windshield stock. But sometimes you just wanna be able to ride with a windshield if you're gonna be riding a little bit longer, or some longer distances. So here lies an issue. Do you get a windshield that's permanent? No. So back again is Memphis Shades Delray Sport Shield. And I also got the brackets. And what these brackets do is it allows you to remove the windshield when you want. These mount right up to the fork. It's really convenient. One thing I really loved about this, especially while I was riding long distance, for those long distance trips, I could have the windshield on in front of me. But when I really wanted to ride without it, if I took all my gear off my bike and wanted to just cruise around wherever I was, like I was in New Mexico in 2018, all I had to do was just take the windshield right off and it was really convenient. One big difference with this shield as opposed to my old one on my 2017 is this is the light smoke. The other one had a gradient color where it was lighter at the top, darker at the bottom. I really like that look. A lot of places are discontinuing the Del Rey. I'm not sure if this is because of supply chain issues or what. Hey, if anybody out there has a Del Rey with the gradient color, I would love to be able to buy that off of you. Let me know. What do I love about the Del Rey? What do I hate about it? I love that it detaches really quickly. I love for my body with the seat height, I can position it just perfectly so it meets my eye level. There's really not much I don't like about it on a Sportster. It's really designed for bikes like this. I'm 5'9", and if the ladies are asking, I'm 5'10". If you're a bit taller, this shield may not be for you. Maybe the Del Rio or something taller if you want something for the Sportster. Now dropping down below the windshield to the headlight. The stock headlight on the Iron883 is just a halogen. It's pretty dim. It's pretty useless. Largely for safety reasons, I'm going with the Wizanic. This is exactly the same headlight that I had on my 2017. This I bought off Amazon for $45. I got another link down below for this. What I love about it is it's a bright LED light. What I don't like about it, it's not American made, it's, it's Chinese. If that's important to you, this is not the headlight for you. But all the American options are ridiculously expensive. <laughs> So the other thing I feel is necessary to change for safety, like the headlight, are the turn signals front and back. So I bought, made by Custom Dynamics, these Pro Beams. These are pretty similar to the ones that I had in my 17 taillights and front turn signals. These are very bright. I'm gonna be able to stand out a lot better than the halogen bulbs that are on the turn signals. What I love about these is it brightens up the bike. It makes you more visible. What I don't like about them, and I'll say this probably a lot about the things that I dislike in this video, is they are a little bit pricey. next moving up to the handlebars I am going to swap out the stock handlebars that are too low for me with the Biltwell chumps now I have a lot of videos on the Biltwell chumps and many of you know I've had some issues with slippage what I love about these bars they're ridiculously comfortable at 8 inches they're the perfect height for me and with the other dimensions it's the perfect comfort that I need while riding there in 883 what I don't like about them the slippage slippage is a problem with these bars and the slippage is largely caused by the lack of knurling on the bars knurling is that stamped crisscross pattern that you see on bars to help them really lock in 
There are a few reasons why Biltwell doesn't do it. The main reason is they want to be able to sell these bars for a lot of different applications. These bars are going to clamp in different locations on the Iron 883 as they will with the Lowrider S or any other bike. It's about all I don't like about them, but I've come up with a really good solution so they don't slip on me. I've gained some welding skills. So once I find the position that I need them in, I'm going to go ahead and tack the bars in place. Maybe that's a good idea, maybe it's not. We'll all find out together. One of the most popular questions on this channel for a long time was what bars are those? So, and the second most popular question was, did I need to change any of the cables, wires, or brake lines? I didn't need to replace the throttle cables. I didn't need to replace the clutch cable. None of the electrical wires either. What I did need to replace was the front brake line. And what I'm gonna do here is something a little bit different than I did with my 2017. I'm gonna install a braided brake line, and it's silver. It might stand out a little bit. It might look good, it might not. What I'm gonna like about this is it's a braided brake line. There are a couple benefits to having braided brake lines over standard rubber brake lines. Over time, rubber brake lines tend to weaken and start swelling, which reduces braking performance. And brakes can begin to feel kind of soft. The braided brake lines really prevent that from happening. When you squeeze the lever with braided brake lines, it feels more firm and responsive. The other benefit is these are less prone to having nicks and scars and damage as rubber would. The only negative I can think of, again, is it's a little bit more expensive for something like this. But I need to swap out the lines anyway, so I figure this is a good opportunity to use braided brake lines. Next up are the grips. Those stock grips are slippery, they're uncomfortable. So I'm gonna go with the Arlen Nest knurled rubber grips. I'm gonna go with something a little bit different this time. I'm gonna go with gold color. I just felt that uh, would add a nice little accent to the Iron 883 instead of the black that I had last time. What I like about them, way more comfortable over stock. Are there more comfortable grips? Yes, of course. But these were only about 60 bucks, so I'm pretty pleased with them. And they look pretty good too. That stock seat is never comfortable. I'm swapping that thing out with the Saddleman Step Up. I know this is on every single Sportster and a lot of soft tails now. For good reason, it is a damn good seat. It has a comfort for long distance. It has the perfect shape and design for the way I ride with this high back, comfortable saddle. It's just an absolute perfect seat. The only complaint I hear about this seat mostly from people who won't buy it, is the expense. The way I see it, you're paying for a good seat. A lot of those seats, yes, are less expensive, but you're not getting the benefit of the comfort. You're not getting the benefit of the gel. You're not getting the benefit of the high seat back here. You're not getting the benefit of the pillion section. There's just so much to love about this seat, and I haven't even talked about how good it looks yet. It'd be very difficult for me to not put a Seidelman step up on any cruiser that I own. Burly sissy bar. 20 inches high, super useful for attaching bags and other things to it for long distance travel. That's what I mostly used it for. A little bit on the pricey side, but not too bad. Really easy to install, and it just gives it that classic look that I really love on my Harleys. This is the Saddleman BR3400. Tactical. I'm gonna pull out a little bit because this bag's so huge. It's pretty big, it's pretty useful, and it attaches to the Burley Sissy Bar perfectly. I'll have a lot more information about this bag when I use it this summer. All right, for these next few mods, I'm gonna pull the iron out so I can give you a visual representation of all the changes I'm making. Let's do that.
The next three encompass the Stage 1 upgrade. This is almost essential on a Harley Sportster. With a Stage 1, you get more power, you get more torque, and it really makes the bike sound like a Harley should. So with this, I'm going with Vance & Hines Big Radius. These are the same pipes that I had on the 2017. What I love about the Big Radius, that 2 in the 1 and that down sweep looks really great on a Sportster. They sound really good too. I'm gonna admit, they are loud, probably too loud. And I live in a very different neighborhood right now than I did in 2017 when I first bought the other Sportster. Hoping that I won't piss off my neighbors too much. So what I don't like is that there are a two into two exhaust system. Using a two into two exhaust system as opposed to a two into one, you're not gonna get as much torque, you're not gonna have as much power. Is it noticeable on an 883? Yeah, maybe a little bit. To be honest with you, I'm going with these pipes for sentimental reasons and because they look really good. Probably before the end of the riding season, I'm gonna have some some different pipes on these, but I just wanted these on here just to experience them once again. So the other thing is this pie plate of an air cleaner here. This thing is ugly, it's huge, and while I'm riding, my knee tends to hit it. So I'm swapping that out with the Joker Machines Finned Air Cleaner. Again, same one that I had on my 2017. It's small, subtle, and it does the job. It has a K9 filter here already pre-oiled. It's already set up to go. I'm really excited to use this. It's small, it's subtle, and it looks really good. And most importantly, it's gonna give me the results that I want. And compared to some other air cleaners out there, it's really inexpensive. And anytime you do a stage one, you're allowing more air in and out of your bike, so you're definitely gonna need to retune. And the Vance & Hines FP3 is one of the best in the market. One thing that was really frustrating about my 2021 Lowrider S is I couldn't use an aftermarket tuner. And I really wanted to because I didn't want to use the Screaming Eagle tuner. I really love the functionality of the FP3, being able to connect it to my phone, being able to look at the treble codes, being able to map it easily. And if I have any issues, being able to call Vance & Hines customer service, sending them the current map, and having them look at the results, sending me a specific map for my specific setup. It's a great company, it's a great product, and I'm gonna have a lot more on the FP3 on this channel after I get it installed. All right, here we're talking about tank lifts and coil relocation. All the parts are coming from DK Custom. I'm gonna do a 1.5 inch tank lift on this bike, just like I did in my 2017. The biggest difference will be the ignition relocation. On my 2017, I had a keyless ignition. This one obviously has a keyed ignition. So let's get on the other side of the bike and I'll show you where I'm gonna locate that to. I'm gonna relocate the coils in between the heads right here, and I'm trying to decide where I wanna relocate the ignition. I'm either gonna put it here with the coils or back here. I haven't quite decided yet. One thing that's gonna be a huge difference on this bike from my 2017 is it's gonna have a LED push button ignition. It's gonna make it much more convenient than using the key and I actually can't wait to have that. So that's gonna be brand new for this bike. I know tank lifts on sporties is a bit polarizing and I've done a lot of videos on that very topic. You either love it or hate it and I outline all the reasons why I think it's a good look on sporties. The beauty of having a Sportster is you get to mod it exactly how you want it to look, to fit your style, to fit your personality. I got a couple of links in the description to some videos where I talk about the polarization of tank lifts. Why I love it, why others might hate it. Go ahead and check those videos out. Let me know what you think about everything that I'm using. And if you like this video, you may like this one on the iron over here or this one down here. <laughs>